Hi guys, it's Kay with Kay's Crochet. I hope you're all doing well. Um, I've been meaning to do a beginner's crochet 101 video for like five years. Never got around to it. But because of the coronavirus, I think we're all being forced to slow down a little bit. So I thought, well, I'm finally gonna make that video. So there's a silver lining. Um, okay, my first tip for beginners is if you can use a, a bulky weight yarn when you're learning with a bigger hook. This is a Burnett blanket yarn with a 9.0. Sometimes I use a 10. Um, the reason for this is because when you're a beginner, it's hard to see your stitches. So these will be easier to see. It's easier to use a bigger hook. Um, I just think it's easier. Now, most people have a worse to wait for laying around. That's fine too. I just think it's a little harder to see things. Um, my, I would recommend though, that if, if you're working on one of your first patterns and it calls for a G, move up one hook size. So if it says G, use an H. If it says H, use an I. That'll help you, number one, not crochet so tightly. And number two, it'll help you with gauge. So until you get more experience and more consistency, going up one hook size is never a bad thing. Um, the reverse of that is people that crochet too loosely and you might want to go down a hook size. But most beginners, not all of them, but most of them crochet too tightly. So now let's talk about why that happens. So, um, there's a lot of different ways to hold yarn. There didn't used to be though, so I think that's kind of funny. But uh, people say, well, I can hold the yarn whatever way I want to, and you can, you can do whatever you want. But I'm telling you, if you wanna be able to um, crochet to gauge, later when you're trying to do patterns, you will go nuts because you won't be able to crochet to gauge because you're holding this yarn so funny. Um, this truly is the best way to hold the yarn. It just is. It works the best. It holds the tension. I know it feels awkward. I know it does. But once you do it and you just keep practicing over and over, this will become second nature. I promise you that. You would just get so used to it, you won't even think about it. So um, the other thing is this finger is so important when you're crocheting. This is what holds the tension. I want you to think of this finger like the tension holder on a sewing machine. This finger should mostly stay still. I've seen people where they use this finger to wrap it around the hook. Don't do that. That's that's going to make it really hard later for you to, you know, when a pattern says four stitches per inch, you'll, you'll just have a really bad time. This gets really important if you ever want to crochet clothes because when you start doing clothes, you have to be able to crochet to, to gauge because Oh, I've seen people just in tears because they crochet a baby dress and it comes out, you know, for the, uh, the size of a two-year-old instead of a baby. Be this is because they can't crochet to gauge. So I promise if you just do this correctly and practice like crazy, you'll have it down um, in no time. But you just got to get used to that feeling. Think of this finger like if you had the tension you know, a uh, holder on a sewing machine, it moved all over like this, then there would be no tension, right? Your sewing would be crazy because this thing was moving all over the place. So this finger really should be still, let this, let the hook do all the work for you. This is also important too. Um, you really don't want any extra motion because carpal tunnel is, a, and it's just a big deal when you crochet. I've got it in both wrists. So you want to do anything you can to protect your fingers, protect your hands, protect your wrists. So you really don't want any extra movement. Um, so let's go on from there. So I'm going to crochet a chain because everybody that's new starts with a chain. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to mark this very first stitch with a stitch marker. And I'll explain later why I did that. So that's our very first stitch. So now we'll just keep making more chains. This is, you know, so important that you keep practicing this chain until you get all your stitches consistent. And I highly recommend don't move on to a project till your stitches are consistent when you make a chain. So, I mean, the good thing is you can just pull them out and do them again. You know, it, it may take a thousand chains to get your tension close 
Um, but the good thing is you just pull them out and do it again. Do like a hundred, pull it out, do it again. So you can see, even trying to do this on camera, which is kind of awkward. My stitches are very consistent, but you know, I've been crocheting for 10 years, but see how consistent they are. This is what you want to get to before you move on to a project. You really want those consistent chains because this is, this is a foundation row. So it sets a foundation for the rest of your project. So you really want this to be nice and consistent, not too loose, not too tight. Okay, so now I'm gonna pull the, some of these out and we're gonna pretend like I'm making a baby blanket, which I think is the best project for a beginner, especially if you use this big fat yarn because it'll work up really quickly. So it's like a little bit of instant gratification. So I'm just gonna do a single crochet so we'll do our first stitch. Now, normally I would use a stitch. I'm gonna mark this stitch like I did the very first one, but I'm out of stitch markers. You can use anything. You could use a paper clip, a piece of yarn, whatever. You just want to be sure and mark your first stitch and your last stitch. Because remember, as you go, your last stitch becomes your first stitch, vice versa. The reason I'm telling you to do this is because the biggest problem with beginners when they do their first blanket is they get those wavy edges. Some of them get one straight edge, one wavy edge. Some of them get two wavy edges. Um, so that's the biggest thing that happens when you're a beginner. Here, the thing is, it's not gonna get better. Some I've seen so many, they just, oh, I'm gonna just keep going. Don't do that, just pull it out and start over. It's not gonna get better. If anything, it's probably gonna get worse. The reason for these wavy edges is because a beginner has a hard time seeing what is the first stitch, what is the last stitch. So they either skip a stitch or they add a stitch and that's why you start to see that wave. So if you just do this, you won't have any wavy edges. They'll be perfect, they'll be pretty. Um, I know I've heard some people say, well, you can cover that up you know, when you crochet the edge when you're done. No, it, it really doesn't cover it up. I just hate to see anybody go to all that work and then have these wavy edges because I promise you, they're not gonna get better. They will get worse as you go. So just pull it out and start again and use something to mark your first and last stitches. So we will continue on. I'm just doing a single crochet, which is usually what all beginners start with. It's like the stitch of crochet. Everything kind of goes around a single crochet. So here we go. We're, we're gonna pretend this is a big blanket and I'm coming to my last stitch. And I know it's my last stitch because I have a stitch marker in it. But it would be hard to see if I hadn't marked it. So We'll do our last single crochet. Chain one, turn. And see, this is where this bigger yarn comes into. See how easy it is to see our first stitch because I'm using this big yarn. Go under both loops. And there's our first stitch of the new row. So we're gonna mark it again. Then we'll do some more single crochets. Okay, so here we go. Here's our last stitch. I know it's my last stitch because I've marked it, but you can see it would, especially now, it would be hard to see that if I hadn't marked it especially if I was a beginner. The other mistake I see is when you do this last stitch, make sure you're under both loops. Cause I see a lot of beginners do that too. They'll only catch one cause the second one's hard to see. Single crochet, chain one and turn. So you can see how nice and straight these edges are. This is what you want to see before you Keep going before you make your first blanket. You really want these nice square edges and that way you'll finish with a great project. 
So I hope these tips helped. Um, if you have questions or if you have a video you would like me to make, just let me know in the comments. Um, hit the subscribe button. I'd really appreciate it. And I hope you all have a wonderful day and happy crocheting.